an analysis of a study called the A to Z study. And, and we'll get into, we'll compare two general studies. Um, that comment is, uh, you know, a, a call to weigh the sum of all evidence. And that is most assuredly what I do. Rest assured. I'm not going to, I don't come to conclusions lightly, especially the conclusion that if someone is insulin resistant, a low carbohydrate diet is superior. I appreciate that the commenter acknowledges that, but then goes on to say the sum of data doesn't support it. Um, let's look. So the diet fits study is a study published um, recently in the Journal of the American Medical Association or JAMA. So that's the diet fit study. And what we can do is compare that with a study that had been done about 10 years before that one, actually with some of the same people at Stanford. So there are a lot of really great similarities here that help us wipe out some confounding variables potentially. It's at the same school, same general population. In fact, many of the same scientists. And they also recruited the same way in these two studies, the A to Z study and the diet fit study. They had similar age, similar ethnicity, similar body mass index or BMI, so body size. So they controlled um, well, two separate studies, but a lot of these confounding variables were just eliminated right from the get-go. So the diet fit study showed that whether they put people on a low-fat diet or a low-carbohydrate diet, there was really no clinical differences across all the, all the, all the study subjects. In contrast, the A to Z study found stark differences. And the A to Z study is fascinating because they compared four different diets the Atkins diet, the Zone diet, the Ornish diet, and the LEARN diet, L-E-A-R-N, it's an acronym, the LEARN diet, those four diets. And they differ in the ratio of, of, of with macronutrients with regards to carbohydrates and fats. Now, they both were about uh, 12 months in, in, in length, so that was a similarity across the studies. And I already mentioned that the overall uh, population of, this, of the study subjects was very similar. Now, the diet, however, is quite different. And that's what I, I kind of resent uh, people, you know, well, using terms incorrectly. Unfortunately, there's a lot of ambiguity with regards to what some might call a low-carbohydrate diet. For example, the A to Z study, that was the study that was done in the late, um, uh, uh, about 10 years prior to the diet fit study. The low-carb diet group, had at the most over the length of the study was 50 grams of carbohydrates per day. It started at 20 grams of carbohydrates and then it went to 50 grams of carbohydrates. In contrast, the diet fit study, they, the group started at 100 grams of carbohydrates and by the end of the study, it was up to uh, over 130 grams of carbohydrates per day. It, it's, it's two to three times higher in the diet fit study, the amount of carbohydrates per day than it is in the A to Z study, it stands to reason that insulin is going to be elevated two to three times more. Right. Yeah, I mean, it actually would be probably higher than that, frankly, because right. it's not one to one. With the students that we have an insulin IQ, that would not be considered a low carbohydrate uh, diet. And this wouldn't even qualify as a successful attempt at uh, being a low carb, high fat uh, nutrition, uh, low, low carb, high fat nutrition.